We think progress has been made in three areas. First, recognizing the opportunity of having more women participate in the economy as an economic imperative. There is a lot of power to the business case for the private and public sector and the notion that we now need to figure out how to capture that as opposed to if it exists is a big shift in the dialogue. Secondly, we recognize that it's multivariate. One of the terrific themes from the Chatham House W20 conference is the interaction between the economic levers, public and private, the social and policy levers, and of course the legal framework. And the Power of Parity report that McKinsey published in, to first in 2015 and then updated globally in 2017 tries to look at all three arenas, not only the business and economic arena, but the interaction with social and policy and, of course, the legal and parliamentary framework. And the final point is we've seen many companies as well as countries want to get more specific. It's incredibly detailed. We also have 75 case studies to give managers and leaders and politicians ideas and confidence that they can make a difference. But nothing substitutes for more granular analysis tailored to your local environment. So here in the UK, we did a piece of work at a national level with BITC, with a set of private sector companies, looking at the impact by region, by industry, and linking it to the productivity of the UK. And it's been much more powerful and actionable. We recently published a Power of Parity Asia, looking at the large and smaller fast growth economies in Asia. We've done one in Canada, the US. So the other big change is that companies and countries want to get specific because they want to get to real actions that will move their economies. And, and it will take a little bit of courage, I mean, even in our work, which historically has not focused on social, legal, or the media. Certainly at a national level, the work that France, Canada, and the UK have done to make their interventions more specific offer a terrific roadmap, quantifying the uh, interventions by industry and by region tells you exactly what you'd want to do in terms of growth, for example, outside London and the southeast, by city, geography, and region. If you look at the growth plans for Canada Grow or the French national plan, it has this notion of gender parity right at the heart of the economic plan. If we look at developing economies, China, India, Indonesia are all examples of geographies that have come up with much more granular and specific plans. Very different sets of interventions than the UK or the US might use, but tailored for their local environment. There's just a much higher likelihood that the interventions will happen and that it will actually get the growth as well as the, the better gender participation. In the private sector and in the public sector as well, it gives managers and leaders the confidence that they can make a difference. And certainly investors and our private sector clients want interventions that they know are going to make a difference. Any business and organization can only concentrate on a few things at a time. If you choose as a CEO, or business leader, or as a head of a public sector organization, to focus on gender participation and gender parity, you want to be darn sure that it's going to make a difference. And so we see businesses linking the growth strategies and inclusive growth strategies to more gender participation, but also other vectors of diversity. Take a company like SAP, which also participated in the Chatham House W20 conference. They look at four different criteria, gender participation, generation, which is both younger, technology-enabled, but also older, keeping experience and judgment, older uh, employees in the workforce. They look at different cognitive abilities with a particular emphasis on autism and having colleagues with skills in areas on the autism spe spectrum participate in all aspects of their business. And then they also let their businesses choose one themselves and tailor it, adding gender, generation, diverse cognitive ability and on the autism spectrum with something that's tailored to the local community in Brazil or the UK or the US. And they're a terrific example of a company that is really finding a tailored formula for how gender parity and how diverse talent adds to their growth story.